Welcome back, brothers and sisters. Dr. Joseph Martin here. Co-interindependence, our new lifestyle. Co-interindependence. Well, that kind of sounds exciting, doesn't it? Let's go have a look at some of the history and background of relationships over the last, say, oh, 2,000 years and from a, an anthropological perspective. I used to teach kinship study and marriage uh, at the University of Toronto in the anthropology department. And back in pre-colonial times, and maybe even in colonial times worldwide, in all nations of the world, or tribes, or chiefdoms, we had what was it called arranged marriage, where parents arranged marriages between young boys and girls, um, on the basis of economy, politics, in terms of political alliances, social alliances, kinship alliances, so that differing neighboring groups would ally so that they wouldn't fight and kill each other. Well, I guess that made sense in an earlier part of human evolution on a societal basis. Then we had in the medieval age, the beginnings, the very beginnings of individualized, romanticized, personal love marriages or relationships with the whole knightly, courtly, nobility sense of uh, the honoring of the feminine and the honoring of the masculine and choosing to love who you wanted to, whoever that might have been. And, and, and doing away with socially arranged uh, and parentally arranged marriages so that's been something that we've been struggling with now here in the modern world for about four or five hundred years. We've been struggling through a lot of failures of relationships with trying to link up with somebody who loves us and who we could love. Of course, not many people really know what love means, and, but love's got to do with it in the most major way. <laughs> and to quote a song there, we need to continue to embrace the failures we've had in relationships because we understand that therein is our way forward. Most of us are in, still in this codependent era of the 20th century and the early 21st century where all our relationships are mostly codependent. And that is based on the fact that I had this potent realizations when I became a marriage and family therapist and taught this at the University of Guelph, that uh, most men uh, who are straight, they marry their mother in their first marriage and, and or significant relationship. And some um, men that I counseled um, eight times in a row through eight failed marriages uh, married their mother and they kept doing that um, and sort of spinning their wheels um, because they didn't do enough inner work. And of course, women, straight women, marry their fathers in their first marriage until they kind of get a bit of clarity and higher consciousness and emotional uh, lucidity and emotional inner work will take them beyond that. And of course, gay men could marry their father and lesbian women could marry their mother. And so this is a great pattern we're in. It's kind of fun. There's no judgment in any of this. So we can, uh, our partners that we've had these experiences with, whether failed or whether we're still struggling and working through them, we can cut them some slack and realize that we're all in this great evolutionary kind of a, a spiral upwards, hopefully. And uh, what we can't cut any slack with ourselves. Because if we're going to move out of codependent relationships and be childish and be puerile and be like three-year-old people emotionally, yet we're 30, 40, 50 years old physically, you know, that's not going to do it. That's not going to cut it. We need to switch it up and we need to be a little more sincere and honest and ruthless in looking at ourselves with great light and clarity and say, you know what, I can take some self-responsibility for this. Um, I don't need to be so childish and needy and, and always like wanting and, and, you know, trying to cross boundaries and trying to 
suck energy from someone else and, and play poor old me or poor young me or, you know, blaming the other person all the time and it's your fault that I'm not getting ahead in the world or, you know, why don't you love me more when in truth we just need to love ourselves more, be more self-reliant and more self-confident and that's the way to switch it up. You can't do anything for anyone else and you can't expect them to do anything for you. The only person you can really get to know and take responsibility for is yourself. And of course, if both people in a relationship are doing this, this is going to be quite exciting. It's what we call, you know, movement forward. It's evolution. It's maturation. It's emotional, psychological maturation. Well, it's quite hilarious for me when I was looking at my relationships and how I can had moved from codependency in early relationships and still working it up to being in a place of co-interindependency. When I mixed my Jungian dream psychotherapeutic uh, depth psychology awareness with the marriage and family and relationship awareness of our times that we're living in, I realized the way forward and the great key is for every individual to do some inner work some dream analysis, some depth psychological understanding of our inner mother complex, our inner father complex that rules our lives for better or worse and usually for worse. Um, because if you're, you're still caught up and enthralled in your mother complex and your father complex or your God complex or whatever it may be, there are quite a few and we'll get into that in other uh, more in-depth, more advanced videos. You know, you're always going to be stuck and you're going to be like drawn back to this kind of earlier restrictive kind of immature way of being with other people and yourself. It's a, it's a great learning, but of course many of you have lost relationships as a result of your lack of emotional and psychological maturity. That's okay. There's no judgment on, on this. Every day is non-judgment day. And life is only for learning. The more you fail in relationships, and as long as you understand why you failed, the better it is. So fail most successfully in relationships. Uh, it would be better if we didn't have to hurt so many people. Uh, but we do need to take responsibility for the pain and suffering we've caused. And we do sincerely need to ask for forgiveness from those that we've been in relationships with and ask them to forgive us. And, and still be friends, if we can be, still be friends. In your heart, you can still send love and be friends with those that you're no longer in a more um, connected uh, relationship with. By doing this, we're giving all everybody some slack and everybody some respect and kindness to grow at the stage and at the level and the timing that's adequate and appropriate for them. We can only do the work for ourselves and on and with ourselves. So this is kind of exciting. And as we all evolve individually and collectively, that will be a, a better society for all of us. The, the key to all this in terms of independence is self-responsibility and self-reliance. And when you become independent and you have a, you will magnetically draw towards you, someone else who's at a higher level of functioning psychologically and spiritually and emotionally, who will be always and certainly working on themselves, you're going to have a, a much more harmonious, joyful life where it's not like opposites uh, attracting, which is an earlier stage of, uh, you know, codependent relationships, you know, where you attract your opposite in an in independent, co-independent relationship, inter-independent relationship, you will attract somebody who's at the same level of maturity and has similarities. You want to have somebody in your life who's similar to yourself. Now, remember at the highest level of a relationship with a significant other, whether it's marriage or, or just being together and or working together, you want to attract and sustain friendships and relationships that whereby you are giving more than you're getting. You're not so needy anymore. And what you're doing is you're wanting the very best and the highest for the, that person's soul. This is a spiritual relationship. The highest and best friendships and relationships 
are one that are spiritually based. When it's spiritually based, when there's great love and service and sacrifice, that's where your bliss and your happiness and joy will be. You can work towards that. It's a goal. It's a hope. It's something, a bar to set for yourself as you work towards your own inner emancipation, higher levels of psychological freedom. Because independence is freedom. It's spiritual freedom, emotional, psychological freedom. It's having done all the work through the painful, dark inner children to the place where you can come to that inner joy of the, the light, the joyful, the soulful, spiritual inner child and just play and enjoy. And when we can do this in our significant other relationship, and I think it's good to have that in your life, it's a, it's a faster track to uh, growth and evolution personally then you can do it with those around you whether it's your family or your business associates or your friends and then the co-independence comes when we can spread that as we're all growing and maturating to the the local community and of course the goal would be uh, to eventually do this for society no matter how many hundreds or thousands of years this can or will take, it's a good goal to have. This is quite exciting. Um, you're going to find some wonderful processes. I do suggest you go and see a very well-trained marriage and family therapist or psychologist, someone who has read these books, understands these processes, has done the inner work and transformed themselves first and foremost, and then can listen to you and share with you steps along your path to help you move from co-dependency in the hell that that can be and the childishness that that can be to a deep individuated independence where you're feeling stronger, more courageous, more heartfelt, more emotionally intimate, more vulnerable and in a good way. It's good to be vulnerable and therefore you can be more empathetic, more listening and more sharing. There's more give and take and both of you in the relationship will grow significantly. So here's to co-interindependence. It's a great stage for moving through. It will add to the foundation of the romantic, personalized love relationship that we're all seeking and can achieve. And of course, love has everything to do with it. And thank you, Tina, for that. Okay, all our love, God bless and good fun on this journey.